Howdy, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Admin. Today's video is a tutorial on how to add custom item textures to Minecraft. Now, you might think that you can just add custom items to Minecraft as a data pack, and while that is sort of true, you can't actually add a new item to the game. Any items that are quote unquote added are actually uh, models that override existing items in the game. You can have an infinite amount of them. So it's not like you're actually running into issues of like getting rid of a vanilla item. However, you're not technically adding anything uh, new when it comes to actually being an item. And I guess an example of that, I've obviously added a ton of items throughout uh, my years, right? There are loads of swords in this chest, right? And uh, you can see they all look like they're, they're new items. However, if we hit F3 and H, that turns on advanced tooltips. And you can see like this one is a totem of undying. This one's an iron sword. This one's an iron sword, iron sword, so on, so forth. Stone sword, uh, diamond sword, right? So these are actually retextures or remodels of a regular diamond sword. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining how exactly we make all of these and uh, how exactly you'll get them in game and the whole like resource pack structure that you're going to need. And just so that you're aware of how this works, uh, with a give command, you can see for an iron, I'm giving myself an iron sword with custom model data 6370001, which correlates to the uh, chorus sword, I believe. But you'll notice once I give it to myself, it just says iron sword. That's because with other data, that's where we actually make it appear to be uh, an actual chorus sword, right? With like the lore and the name and everything. All right, so to get started, we're going to need to make a resource pack. So you can get to your resource packs folder. You can go escape, go options, resource packs, open resource packs folder. And now we're in our resource packs folder. So you can see I've already started by making a new resource pack. I'm calling it add custom items tutorial. This will be linked for download in the video's description if you wanna just mess around with this file and follow along from there. Okay, so then a resource pack needs to just follow all of like the normal formats. I would suggest downloading the one from the description to get uh, like all of this information. However, you just could make it yourself as well or follow some other tutorials, but we need this pack.mc meta, we need the pack.png. This is not a tutorial on how to make a resource pack though. So look that up yourself. What we do need, we need this assets folder and then Minecraft, and then we need a models and a textures folder. And in the models folder, we need an item folder. This is very important, but then we also want a separate one. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be adding a new diamond to the actual uh, game. I think I'm gonna go with like a red diamond or something like that. And so this folder could be literally anything. So maybe you're making like a potato cannon. So you'll call the folder potato cannon. Uh, the only important thing is that there's no capitalization and no spaces in this name. So then the item tutorial is very important. This is where we're going to be putting a new model that's going to replace a vanilla model. But we're going to need to actually get that vanilla model first. While this step isn't necessarily needed, I would still suggest doing it. So you can go to percent updated percent roaming dot minecraft. Uh, sure that you know how to get to this folder if you're playing Minecraft, but go to versions, go to 117 or whatever the latest version at the time is and use 7-zip or another program to open the archive of the .jar. And we should get something along this lines. This .jar file basically contains all of Minecraft's assets and you can grab uh, from the assets Minecraft folder. This has all of the textures, all of the models and everything else. Uh, I would suggest just running copy to, hit OK, and this will grab every single thing and it will uh, just put it into this folder called Minecraft. You would probably want to rename this to like Minecraft Assets or something like that. So then from here, we can go into the model item folder and you can see this is every model for every item in the game, but we're looking for the diamond model. So we can just search for diamond, we can grab diamond, and uh, copy that and then back in our resource pack, go to uh, the, the models item folder and paste that here. So now we have 
this diamonds.json file like so. Now, it's good to understand exactly what this file is. So this is a model, it's an item model, and it's saying that it, its parent is the item generated. Uh, item generated is like the flat texture that every item in the game uses for the most part. Um, and so this makes it like to set up like how the, the diamond is going to be held and how it's going to render and stuff. And then this is just referencing the texture. So the texture is in the item folder and it's named diamond. This is probably going to be diamond.png, but you, you leave the, the .png part off. So this is an important path that you're going to need to keep in mind because it applies to the next couple of steps. Okay, so our next step is to add this. So we used to just have uh, this parenthesis here and then um, these here, but we added this comma and then overrides and then this is a list. So it could be multiple entries. Currently we just have one here and you can see that the folder name is diamonds slash XP. That is the model that we're going to be referencing, but we wanted to change this to like red diamond or something like that. And then the custom model data right here, this is going to be what value uh, needs to be entered in game for this model to show up or this texture to show up. So um, normally I go with my first three digits are three, six, seven, and then you have the, the remaining four to work with. This is uh, pretty useful for making sure that data packs are compatible with each other. Because suppose every data pack maker was just went with one. Um, any other person that modeled diamonds and had a custom model data of one, we would have a conflict and it would break. So set this to some number that you're going to remember and um, won't conflict with other people. So just choose, choose a number that's kind of unique, right? Um, Let's see, so I'm gonna go with 6380001, so we can remember that for later. And realize that this is a list, so you can actually have multiple entries in this list. We could have as many as we want, but the important thing to note, um, all of their custom model data need to be different, but they also need to all end with a comma unless they are the last entry in this list. So this one does not end with a comma, but all of the others do. And then we would want to say like model two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then change the name. Um, in this case, let's just copy all of these. And then we'll have, yeah, diamond two, diamond three, and so on. All right, so back in our folder view, we want to do a little bit more work. So currently we have, we have our diamond.json. This is looking um, well, it's changing the actual model of the vanilla uh, diamond if the custom model data matches to reference red diamond. Not the texture though. This is referencing a model. We have yet to make this model exist. So we need to go to the diamonds folder because we have diamonds here and then paste red diamond into here. Um, and then this is a model that should look exactly like the vanilla diamonds model, right? Except that the texture path is going to be different. In our textures folder, we have a folder called diamonds and we have yet to put the actual texture in here, but we know that the texture needs to be in diamonds and then we'll probably wanna call it red diamond, right? So now if we have a red diamond texture, it will show up in game like such. And as we did earlier, we already extracted all of the vanilla Minecraft textures. So we could go to textures, item, and this has every item in the game. We could go to diamond, grab this, and then um, put it into our diamonds folder. And again, this is going to need to be called red diamond, like so. So then we can open it in whatever uh, image editor you want to use. I personally use paint.net. It's a free program that is pretty powerful, but whatever you feel most comfortable with, I would use. So uh, we're just going to change this to be red. So I'm just going to change the, the saturate, the hue, the hue on it to be like a reddish color. And then hit save. And technically now we have a red diamond. All right, so in game, if we just give ourselves 
um, a diamond, so a vanilla diamond with the custom model data that we set, which can, if you remember, it was 6380001. You'll see now we have our red diamond. So that is pretty much all there is for this tutorial. Of course, this is just called diamond. So you can uh, look into actually like changing the name of it or changing what it does. But this is how you can get custom modeled or custom textured items in game. Now, as for actually making the items that you have, you know, brought textures for, do things. That's probably a story for another day. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There's still a ton to cover because, you know, data packing is not exactly an easy feat. But it can absolutely be rewarding. So don't give up. Just keep trying and try to continue learning because there's so much to learn and I cannot possibly make enough tutorials to cover everything. So do some learning of your own and uh, yeah, I hope it goes well. And that is pretty much going to do it for this tutorial. If you're looking for more direct support on data pack making and everything to do with that, Feel free to support me on Patreon. People at five or more dollars a month gain access to my Ask an Admin channel where I basically just answer any data pack related questions that you might have. Stuff like, why isn't this working? Or what would the best way to program X be, right? I'll answer all of those questions in a pretty timely manner thus far. So if that is something that you are interested, check the I card in the top right. And yeah, it's five or more dollars a month. You gain access to unlimited questions. Um, I might not be able to answer all of them, but I will do my best to get to all of them. And yeah, I thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the very next one. Thanks again for watching.